Hello everyone, welcome back to Unified Oski. Your success is our delight and for all aspiring UK registered nurses. Please make sure you practice and practice before your exam. You cannot over practice. Get a study partner from a study group. Practice and be guided by the NMC marking criteria. Yeah, let's back to business. We're looking at pressure risk assessment. It is a silent station in the OSCE. You have eight minutes to fulfill those parts in your exam. You have access to three basic charts. You have access to a your question chart and you're expected to mention the pressure areas, the areas that are prone to developing pressure so in the body. Eight points, you are good to go. And you're also expected to mention the signs of pressure developing in the body. And seven points of signs of pressure related risk developing on the body. Seven points, you are good to go. And you have the score. You are expected to score each of the category do a total sum of your subscore and give the necessary intervention. Are you going to make use of a standard tool to carry out this task? And that brings us to the Braden scale assessment. So the Braden scale is a standardized, evidence-based, highly effective tool, widely used and it's, it's, it is accepted all over. It helps us to develop, to assess those that are at risk of developing pressure related injuries. So you have six categories and the six categories comprises of the sensory, moisture, activity, mobility, nutrition, friction, and shear. Those are the six categories. And each risk factor is rated on a scale of one to four, except for the friction and shear that is rated on a scale of one to three. So that is the Braden scale that we are going to use to score your patient's scenario. Just Let's mention the areas that are prone to prayer so. Of course, we all know that the heels, the sacrum, the chair to velocity, the elbows, temporal region, shoulders, femoral, trochanter hips, the toes, the ears, the spine. There are more, but that, that will be enough and you have eight points, you are good to go. And then the signs that may indicate that someone is developing pressure cell. We have an acronym we use in Unified OSCE, and that will help you to get your points at fingertips. It's just, just follow the acronym BDL I COP. The B, blisters, D, discoloration. Then the L stand for localized high core. So we have localized heat, in duration, coolness, odima, published area. Then the two other ones, if you want to add it, but seven points, you are fine. We have persistent erythema or flushing of the skin. And we have non-blanching hyperemia, and that is okay. So then you, you just like we said earlier, have a critical look at the six risk factors and that will help you to score rightly now we're going to look at each of the the areas the risk area and points one after the other we're looking at the sensory perception so the sensory perception is just about the patient's ability to respond to pain or to voice discomfort so you focus on the level of consciousness 
and the ability to respond to pressure related injuries and you score that on a score of one to four of course it's written on your charts you don't need to cram it so find the one that best fits into your scenario as regards to sensory of course the scenario will not take it to follow systematically so just go when it's talking about sensory talking about um obeying command or um, unconsciousness then that gives you an idea that you are your focus will be on sensory so that's about sensory we move to the next one which is about moisture the when it comes to moisture what are you looking out for you want to focus on the degree to which the skin is moist the the wetness of the skin is it constantly moist is it at risk of breaking down is it um so like you look out for those adjectives that qualify the wetness of your patient's skin always moist constantly moist dry is the patient's incontinence of stool and that drainage wound that is making the skin moist and wet always that is what you want to look for as regards the moisture so now we move to the activity so when we're talking about the activity i know the activity and the mobility sometimes they get like you get confused between these two but the activity when, when you want to mark your activity as regards your scenario the score for your activity what your focus is on the degree at which the patient is physically active how frequent are they able to move to walk are they able to move or move in bed move out of chair you know, this is about being able to be physically active that is what activity is all about and you score that on a rating of one to four it's there on your chart you don't need to cram it so we move to the next one which is talking about mobility so now this for your for, to score your mobility the focus is on the ability to control or change body posture like rolling in bed shifting in chair ability to move the extremities so that is what your mobility rating is all about and that is rated on a scale of one to four and fits and rate it accordingly we move to the next one which is nutrition most times when you look at the scenarios nutrition is very it's much more easier let me put it that way you just go and look for the keyword the adjective that qualifies how much your patient is able to eat as regards the nutrition is a nutrition so the food intake pattern the ability to complete a meal is it only half of a meal is it one third of a meal so those are the things you look out for is it poor is it inadequate on your nutrition chart so that's all about nutrition just call it accordingly i will move to the last one which is the friction and here and that is a rating of three it's either you have a problem on the skin is either there is potential problem on the skin or no apparent problem and that's all on friction and shear so now you now do a total score of each of this category and arrive at your score rating for your patient so it's important that you score it rightly if you miss a score or score or give a wrong scoring it's going to affect your intervention a, a wrong scoring might move your patient from no risk to um another another rating so that is why it's it's important that we score it rightly when you score it wrongly that will lead to wrong intervention and this may lead to a fail in your OSCE. so the lower the score the higher the risk 
and please don't refer to your branding skill for the right intervention based on your total scoring for your scenario no risk 19 to 23 falls within the category of no risk 15 to 18 is termed mild risk moderate risk falls between 13 to 14 high risk 10 to 12 and the score of six to nine is severe risk okay and that is all we have for you as regards your burden skill so we have a scenario a scenario that we have posted on this chart and that is on jones so you have a total score of eight for joan based on the scenario we can all give it a practice and please post your answer and question on the platform. Thank you for watching. Let your likes, the subscription, keep it coming. And we hope to bring more tips to help you stride with success in your OSCE journey. Bye for now.